I've spoken before about how we can have an API for our website and how we can authenticate with that using an authentication call. And in that authentication call, we pass back a JWT embedded within a cookie that then the browser then sends back with every request that we make to our API. And we can use that to make sure that the user is authenticated to use our API. And the reason that that works is because we set an arbitrarily long expiry time on the JWT such that for 99% of cases, the user is done with our website before that JWT expires. But what happens if we want to increase the security around our JWT and shorten that expiry time down to something where it becomes a problem and while the user is on our site, it expires. So what I'm talking about here is on my website, I've got a call to the API here to go and get this version information down the bottom here. So that makes a call. And when that makes the initial call, when you first bring up the site, so if I do a refresh, there's no auth cookie. It makes a call to the API, which goes and gets the auth cookie the first time through because it's the first call to the API. So let me jump over and show you that. So over in the call API composable, if we haven't authenticated already, so we've just got a global has authenticated, which initially we set to false so on the first time through, that's set to false. So we set it to true and we make a call to authenticate to go and get our authentication cookie. So that's a one time deal. And we've now got our authentication cookie stored inside of the browser. But now what happens if the JWT that's embedded within that expires? So over in my API, I set an expiry time against the JWT that I embed inside of that cookie. And normally this is an arbitrarily long expiry time of like eight hours or three hours, more, more than you would expect any user to spend on your particular site. But if I set this arbitrarily low, so two minutes, then I've already made my initial call here. So if I hang around for two minutes on this website and then make a call to some other API, so in this case, my contact me API, and two minutes have gone by since I last called the API, it means that that JWT will have expired. And so what we get is a 401 coming back from our API saying that we are now unauthorized. Our JWT has expired and the user can't do what they want to do. And they now can't also refresh that cookie. There is no mechanism for them to automatically refresh that other than refreshing the whole page and starting again from scratch. So. How do we handle this situation where our JWT has expired and how can we handle refreshing that API authentication cookie automatically behind the scenes? That's what we're going to go and have a look at in this video. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, whenever it is I find you and welcome along to the channel. So today we're having a look at refresh tokens and calling our API when our authentication token expires, essentially. So we've got our call here inside of our contact us page um, in this particular case. And we can see that we would throw into this catch if there are any errors and we have a specific case for if it's a 422 error, which means that there's some sort of data entry problem. But for our case, we would throw into this else clause down here and just handle that as a generic problem. Now we could handle the 401 explicitly the same as the 422 and say, if it's a 401, then go and recall authenticate and that kind of thing but we would have to do that in every place in our application where we're doing our call API, which kind of negates the point of having it as a composable because the point of a composable is to cleanly encapsulate reusable functionality across your entire application. So it would be nice if we could encapsulate the refresh of the token when it expires automatically inside of our call API composable. So that's what we're going to try and achieve. And to do that, we are going to use this library called refresh fetch, which if we look at the documentation is a wrapper around fetch with graceful authentication token refreshing. Great, sounds exactly what we need. And just while we're here, if you do find this useful and you do find yourself using this library, then please do give it a star because it does help 
the GitHub author out. So let's jump over to the code and let's get this library installed. So let's install refresh fetch. Let's also bring in the types for it as well so that we keep TypeScript happy. Now over in our composable, our call API composable, we need to move things around a little bit here. So let's start with the important bit at the top and let's bring in configure refresh fetch from that refresh fetch library. And then let's add our first should refresh method, which is basically a method that the library uses to determine whether or not the token should be refreshed. So in our case, we know that 401 gives us a problem and tells us that we need to basically recall our authentication method to go and get a new token. If you've got a proper, I say proper API, but some APIs give you a refresh token that you then have to use to make another call to go and get the refresh token. So you can use the same approach here. It's just slightly different in the fact that you would make a call to a refresh API call using that refresh token to give yourself a new token that you then use from that point on. So it's, it's down to your API really how you handle this, but the, the concept is the same. So you have a should refresh that you basically tell the API whether or not the token needs refreshing. And then we have a refresh token method which is what gets called if the token actually needs refreshing so in my case i'm just going to call the authenticate much like i did further down here so if it's the first time through i call authenticate whereas now if it's a refresh situation i also call authenticate so now i'm going to change the composable because I actually need an internal one. So I don't want this to be the one that gets called. I want this to be an internal one. And then whereas I was calling ofetch down here, I can just change that to calling that new refresh token so that it does the same thing first time through. It will call the authenticate method. And then we can add in the real composable that gets called across our entire site. So call API. And that's going to call this configure refresh. Now in configure refresh, that takes the arguments of what method it should call to determine if the refresh token needs refreshing. It takes the method to actually refresh the token. And then we also give it the method to call that we were actually trying to make originally outside of doing our token refreshing. And that's all there is to it. We've now hooked up automatically refreshing into our composable. So let's save this and run this up. And I've got my expiration time on my JWT set to one minute. So if I come over here and we see that our auth cookie has disappeared because it's a session cookie. So when this finally refreshes, we'll see that our API gets called. And we now have an auth cookie that's valid for one minute. So at this point, I can go and call my other APIs happily because my authentication cookie hasn't expired. And then if I hang around on the site for a minute until that expires, what we'll see over in the network tab, so we can see that the call that I just made there was no authentication call before it. And if I wait for a minute, so let's give this a go. And there we go. We can see that we get our 401 from our initial call, which means that the tokens expired. Our refresh token library automatically refreshes our token by calling the authenticate method for us again, which gives us back a new authentication token. And then we subsequently recall the method that we were originally trying to call, in our case, the send email message, which this time succeeds because the authentication cookie has been refreshed and is valid again. So now we can make API calls across our site. And if the authentication cookie has expired, it will automatically get renewed behind the scenes and we just don't have to worry about it. The composable wraps all of that up, which I think makes your code really nice and clean across your app. So that's what I wanted to cover in this video. Hopefully you found that useful. And if you did and you've not done so already, then please do give a like and consider subscribing to the channel so that you get more tips, tricks and tutorials like this one.
And with that, a quick thank you to my sponsors, without whom these videos wouldn't still be being made. Uh, it's very much appreciated, all of your support out there. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.